Yo, what's up? This is Junior Sanchez, and you're watching Toasted. Hey, uh, you were one of the originators. Uh, you saw the dance scene evolve into this monster that it is today. Uh, what do you think of it as it is right now? I mean, I think it's grown exponentially, and it was, uh, it's incredible what, what, what has happened. Um, you know, the electronic music culture, and I call it house music, is it's always was considered novelty in America, and it exploded to what it is now. I think it's fantastic, and I think it's time for everything changes. To me, I look at it like the wheel never gets reinvented. It just slows down, and then somebody has to come and spin it again. And, and, uh, and I think there's always going to be a yin to the yang. So the subculture is always going to live, and there's going to be a pop culture part of it. And then sometimes it shifts, and now the, uh, the subculture is becoming more commercialized. The underground culture is getting bigger, and then the EDM culture is now becoming uh, subdued, like something that a, a passe. But then this that everybody loved that was underground will soon be like, ah, oh, we don't like it because it'll be another subculture. So it just, you know, just constantly goes. Yeah. Constantly We're goes. probably on the peak of uh, what I call the Dutch golden era of, of dance. I mean, the Dutch are dominating the, well, the charts, there are charts. Um, what do you think of this period, actually? Do you, do you like the Dutch DJs? I got a lot of respect for the Dutch DJs because I have a lot of respect for the Dutch period. Um, one of one of my closest friends, obviously, is uh, Layback Luke, and I know him since we were kids. We we're like about the same. He's a, a, a year older than me, I think. And um, he was making techno. I mean, he was. I mean, me, Armand, all of us were killing his records in the beginning before we met him. And he was, you know, doing remixes for Green Velvet, The Stalker, and you know, he he found his. He grew as an artist and did what he needed to do. But his roots are still underground roots yeah he has though we all do we all we all evolve and grow and, and experiment but the dutch culture is amazing unlike, unlike hip-hop you know hip-hop has uh they have their time the south had their time atlanta texas had their time with crunk you know or no chopped and screwed new york had miami had their time with bass same with dance music everything has a time new york had its time chicago had its time the dutch had its time the dominant the french had their time of dominance same thing so you know so who, who will dominate next what do you reckon new york's coming back really we're gonna come back yes is new it york? just braggadacious because no. you're from there no because we're gonna come back and actually you know make make some changes you know hey two people that were uh, important uh, for your career yourself uh you mentioned the layback look already but also arm of and i read i'm not sure if this is true that you actually met him while you were selling t-shirt at a gig yeah absolutely yeah it was a rave in boston and his name was dj aviate so he had a label called Aviate that he released hip hop. And so he used to do stuff on the Pirates of the Caribbean, all these pseudos. And his label was Aviate, and that was his DJ name. He was DJing, and I would take logos like Burger King and change it to say Disco King. And he liked the shirt. And I was like, yo, and I, I knew who he was from his records. He wasn't Armand Van Helden at the time. And um, he's like, yo, I'm moving to New York. And I'm like, all right. And he goes, I'll look you out. And we exchanged numbers. I actually had telephones, not mobile phones. And, um, and when he came to New York, he had a party. He called me and said, yo, I'm having a party tonight. And, and we just, you know, our, cemented our friendship from then on. The parties back in the days were, and of course, we'll, we'll stop talking about back in the days after this one because it starts to get boring. But what we, uh, what I think personally is that when, I, when we meet the DJs who are big right now, uh, there is not a hardcore backstage party. Those guys aren't into massive partying like well, probably the New York DJs were. Do you think the scene has become more boring? Well, maybe more professional. I don't know. It's definitely more professional. There's more organization, and I'm, I'm there's DJs that party. I think they just know how to keep it quiet better because of social media. <laughs> you know, I think I think everyone's more strategic now. Before you weren't worried about what you were doing because nobody was documenting it. Nobody was taking a picture and posting it tomorrow. You know, so it was different. So you had a lot more freedom. Now, you know, if you're a DJ and you have extracurricular activities or you're, you know, you're married and you're with a girl, you know, you almost, you can't even tell yourself. <laughs> you just completely got to do everything covertly. You know, but I think, you know, it's, it's, it's stale in, in, in a certain aspect. But I think people, you know, a lot of people have grown up. And I think a lot of the young kids that are coming in now are having a great time. You know, like I see the Martinez brothers and they're just having a blast. And I like that, you know. I, like, I love that too, because I think, I mean, you, as far as I'm concerned, you need to know how to party in order to let other people party. I've definitely done a lot of partying. 
a lot of partying. I could have been on this rooftop where, where a lot of noises, but I came, I wanted to lay here with my girl. I'm like, I just want to chill. Like I'm, you know, I'm, I have that balance. Last night I played. I no doubts about you. Yeah, last night I played, uh, um, I do not sit on the furniture. It was myself, Kevin Saunderson, DJ Pierre, Todd Terry, and Sonny Federa. And it was, it was a night. It was a diverse lineup, but rocking, quality. Probably also uh, a period of time in the dance where you can actually watch you four guys playing in a relatively small club. Of course, it's packed, but I mean, 10 years ago, that was unthinkable of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's not. Uh, now what I'm finding is the parties here. If they're smaller, they're good, and if they're if they're too big, they're bad. So it has to be in the, in the middle. Because when it's too huge, it's there's no there's no vibe. You know. You you did basically, I think every every job you can have in the music industry when it goes to labels. You've been an A&R manager, a label owner yourself, uh, and you talked about this. The music industry has changed a lot. One of the things is that a lot of musicians, a lot of electronic dance producers rather release singles than albums and me as a music lover i don't like it i want as much music as possible yeah, yeah um we had i had this conversation yesterday about the album culture but i think things change because of technology i mean spotify is a, a monster and they're they're you know the streaming services and the single culture you know like i said the the, the wheel doesn't get reinvented it just spins a different way so But I believe in the story of an album. Like, I, I've just finished my album, and it's funny because I'm partnering with a Dutch company, Armada, and um, and my album's through Brobot, distributed through Armada. and They will release your album. Yeah. And it's called Under the Influence. And the premise of my album, it's funny enough, is I realized all my peers are my friends, like Todd Terry, Armand, and, and, you know, we speak all the time, and Todd comes to my house, and Kenny Dope, and, and you forget that you're still, I'm still their fan, and, I, and I'm still influenced by them, you know? But you take, you get jaded, you take advantage, of, or, or you just forget the fact that you're always hanging out with them. But then I reflected back, I said, wait, I'm still your fans, even though we're best friends. So I made a record that pays homage to my friends. So how did you do that? I mean, did you involve them, or did you go back to the sound back in the days, or? Back to the sound, what I try to do is encompass their emotion, and, and if, convey that emotion in today so on your album we can find totarian music you can literally find um emotions of todd of masters at work of kenny and louis mood to swing armand daft and it's like i'm and there's one song at the end called um back to that and it's like an homage to everyone and i pretty much shouted out everybody at the end of the record in song form and it's like we are all under the influence of this person that person this person why and And, you, you know, it's about showing them respect. And the kids need to understand that. And if I can do it and I'm one of them, I think the kids should understand the culture as well. I don't think anyone can do it. I and mean, you need to have a lot of talent and a lot of perseverance. So, I mean, but still, um, will the album be out of vinyl as well? It's amazing you just said that. <laughs> I had a conversation with uh, the head of A&R at uh, Armada, Jerome. We literally just said, and I want him to please send him this interview. <laughs> we're gonna release it on vinyl. Yes, we're gonna do a li limited, limited edition, cool collector's vinyl, and I want to do that because it should be on vinyl. It should be on a physical form. That's amazing. How many copies will you make, actually? Because I gotta have one. We'll, we'll send you one, a hundred percent. I love you, man. Already, this. But we'll send you one. But this is this is the best interview all week. Hey, um, will you tour the album as well, actually? Yes. Any place that would have me play that's not too big. I want to do an intimate club. I want to DJ my album from beginning to end. So exactly how you hear it, I'm going to extend it and DJ the experience. So you get to, because a lot of people don't listen to albums fully. So if I'm going to play for you, I'm going to, you're going to listen to my album. This is the way it should be. Yeah. So you're going to listen to my album. You're actually going to go in, I'm going to press start, and I'm going to create an experience, and I'm going to DJ every cut of my album for you to understand it. my story. And this is amazing. I love it already. Uh, when will it be released? First single, I think, is coming out this summer, maybe about May. It's called You and I and the Music. Yeah. And then the whole album will be released after it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to do little mini mixes on Spotify. It's like, so it'll be three-part mini mixes of the album. So the first like 15 minutes and the second 15 minutes and so you can uh, you can kind of experience it in that way wow 
looking forward to hear that. It's yeah. awesome. Hey, it sounds, looks to me like you are really uh, making the best of uh, what modern technology has to offer yeah. in the music industry. Um, um, do, you, do you see it as a blessing now or is it still, well, it also has its downsides, of course. I think it's a necessary evil to everything in, in a certain aspect. Um, you have to adapt because if you don't adapt, you're not going to understand what's going to come because right now it's these platforms you go to sleep you wake up it's another platform so if you don't understand what's happening you're just gonna you're gonna go back into a cave and make music with two rocks and you're not gonna understand what's going on so you know I think uh, technology is it, it's it's inevitable what's happening um, we are gonna get to the point in, in our, maybe not our lifetime maybe our kids or our kids kids of singularity where a, a artificial intelligence is very real um, social media is very real and we it might continue on this path for a long time or there might be a rebellion where people don't want to believe what they see and they want to have something more organic i don't know i don't have the answers maybe ray kurzweil does take the red pill or the blue pill right yeah because yeah take the red pill, but we definitely are living in the matrix 100 <laughs> percent. two more things that i love from your uh, facebook page uh, one uh, throwback uh, picture to uh, what you said, like back in the days. Uh, can you remember this? Everybody who was will probably remember that night. Uh, it was Madonna standing in front of the decks. Oh yeah, I just had a conversation. It was uh, misshaped, so I brought her. I suggested her to come out to this club in New York called the Misshapes because I told her I said if you had just moved from Detroit now, this is where you would go. And she trusted in me, believed me, and my friend Stuart Price. You know, Liberty Metallica produced the record, and he came, and we DJed, and we had a great time. It was historic. Amazing. Yeah, definitely. Small club. Small club. Yeah. How did the crowd react? Actually, they must have been astounded. Like this. It was like literally, you thought the roof was gonna fall. Yeah. So you must have plenty of more of those stories that nobody knows about. A uh, couple of stories. I took me one. Um, I mean that that one was in particular is amazing. Uh, there was times where uh, Paul Epworth, you know, who produced Adele, Phones, he, we, we would go and DJ at a, a bar called Happy Ending, and, you know, and I remember we were, like, super wasted, and he would take his skin and stretch it out, and he, he <laughs> forgot his USBs, and, you know, the things like that, and I remember, like, Block Party loving them because they were a band, and then they dropped their guitars and picked up turntables. I saw the culture shift so many times, it's amazing. But look at guy. Hey, uh, what, uh, another thing that I loved, uh, your FaceTime picture with uh, Zalia Banks. Are you working with her, actually? There might be something happens with Zalia Banks, but we can't really... Uh, that would be a killer collab. Yeah. She's amazing. Yeah. She's an amazing artist, and, she, and I think she's misunderstood. Very outspoken, but I love her stuff. Yeah. Cool. So that's good news as well. Uh, then, uh, to wrap this all up, uh, you have another career in cooking, I saw. You made your first flan. It looked pretty good. Oh, yes. I love cooking. Um, I'm a foodie. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's part. It's like art to me in the culture. It's you know, it's food, fashion, music, art. It's all kind of intertwined, you know. So coming together and you. Yeah. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much. Before we get kicked on the beach. Yeah, I know. Before we we start going crazy. Thank you.